Hello and welcome to part 6 of Let's Create a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. My name is Colin, and this tutorial not so mini series will be creating this 2D platformer video game. Of course, in this game, you control the player on screen using keys on your keyboard. Of course, you can walk, run, jump, and fall. You can collect coins, squash enemies, get hurt by enemies, and lose lives. You can do wall jumps, shoot fireballs, find keys to unlock doors, all that great 2D platformy game action. So this is tutorial part six. If you have not seen the first five parts of this mini series where we start making this game, I'll put a link to this whole playlist with all my Godot 3 tutorials up on the screen right now. It's a playlist, go ahead and check that out. In this video, we're gonna be adding a camera into our game so that as you control the player moving around the large world that you hopefully have at this point in your project, the camera will actually follow you as you move around. Now, this poses some problems because you might not want the camera to always follow you no matter where you go on screen. Like if you fall down into the abyss, you don't want the camera to keep following you forever. You want the camera to stop and kind of let you go off the bottom of the screen. So we're gonna have to tackle that problem in this video. That's quite easy to do. We're gonna set some camera limits up, but let's go ahead and jump into our Godot editor. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel channel and helps my channel grow. If you want to see more videos like this one in the Godot game engine or in Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So in the last video, we created a world using a tile map and a tile set. That means that if I click on my tile map node, I can just paint new platforms. If I want a platform up here, I can just select those those tiles from my tile set, a palette over here, and then I can just click in the orange square at that place in the grid where I wanna put that tile. And now I have one more platform in my game. But as you can see in the middle of my screen, I have the viewable area of my game, which is a rectangle, which actually measures 1,024 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. And that's the size of our game window. So if I go up and press my play scene button, well, this is the size of my game. And if I go off the edge of my screen, I know there are platforms somewhere over here. If I jump off the side, well, I might land on one of those platforms, but I don't know. I want the camera to shift over and follow me. How do you do this? Before we get to that, I wanna point out that you can change the size of your game window, and that is done in the project settings. So up here under the project menu, in project settings, we have a general tab along with other tabs along the top, but under the general tab, there is a sidebar uh, with lots of categories, and the category or subcategory window, which I already have up, has the width and the height of your window. So if you wanna change the size of your game's window or make it no longer resizable by the player, if they download your program for a Windows computer or a Mac or a Linux computer, you can't allow them or not to resize the window, you can decide. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these two numbers at 1,024 by 600 because I think that's a good value. Some people like 1,280, by 800 because that's a common game resolution i suppose or 1280 by 720 i'm going to leave it at the default 1024 by 600. be careful that if you turn on borderless or full screen that might cause you problems where you can't actually close the game once you bring it up so be very careful we might touch upon that in a future video but i will press close and what we need to do is add a camera into our game. So I'm gonna select the level one, the root node of this scene, and I'll press the plus button to add a node. I'm gonna search for camera, and I wanna make sure I select camera 2D and not the pink camera, that's for 3D games. So camera 2D, now we have a camera 2D as a child of level one, and you will see now if you select camera two, or even if you don't, there will be another purple rectangle in your game world, this is your camera. But if I press the play scene button, will it be the active camera? No, it won't because a camera that you add is not the active camera by default. I have to select it and then go to its properties where I have to check the on button next to current. Now this camera is the active camera. We might have multiple cameras and so it doesn't make the new one the default one by default. Okay, so I'm going to press the play scene button. We've got current turned on. And now we can see that our camera isn't pointing somewhere useful. Our character started off in the corner 
and it just fell down. It's on the ground, it's safe, we just can't see it. So instead of having the camera as just a child of level one, I'm actually gonna make the camera a child of Steve. Why we're doing this is when you make an object or a node, a child of another object or node, it moves along with that node. So I'm gonna grab the camera and drag it on top of Steve and let go. And so now in this level one scene, the camera's a child of Steve. And now if I press play scene, well, the camera fell down, it moved with Steve. And if I move left and right, you will see that the camera actually moves along with Steve. Now, it's not perfect because Steve is obviously not in the middle, and that's what I would probably want. And the camera moves very rigidly with every single pixel that Steve moves, my camera moves, and I don't want that. So let's go ahead and edit some settings here. I'm gonna select my camera. First, I'm gonna center the camera on Steve. The reason why it's not centered on Steve right now is because I added the camera to our main world. And by default, any object that you add gets put at zero, zero of its parent object. So the camera is now centered at zero, zero of our main world and our X, Y coordinates. When we made the camera apparent instead to Steve, well, the camera just stayed centered at the world zero, zero. So I'm gonna select my camera and go over to its transform property section in the inspector and change its position to now be considered at zero, zero relative to Steve. So now the camera is centered exactly on Steve. So if I press the play scene button, Steve will be centered and the camera will follow every single little movement that he does. But ideally what we want is we want Steve to have some kind of grace room right here where Steve can move around in the middle of our scene and walk back and forth and the camera will just stay still until Steve gets too close to one edge or the other or too close to the top or bottom and the camera 2D object actually has that capability built in. So what I have to do is I have to select my camera over in the scene dock and over in the camera's properties in the inspector, I have to enable both drag margin H enabled. So I'll turn that on. That means that the camera will actually have that grace area in the middle. If I hover over this property of the camera, it says, if true, if I check on, the camera only moves when reaching the horizontal drag margins. If false, if not turned on, the camera moves horizontally regardless of margins. So that's what I want. I want Steve to be able to move in the middle of the camera's view, but I want there to be margins near the edge of the camera's view where if Steve goes into that area, it forces the camera to move in that direction to follow Steve. So what I'll do is I'll enable drag margin V for vertical up and down as well. And so now if I play this scene, well, I'm free to move around in the middle of the scene exactly as I want, but if I go too close to one edge or too close to another edge, the camera will follow me. If I stop, the camera stops and I can move around in the middle. And if I jump up, the camera will follow me to a certain extent, Ooh, and I fell. But as you can see, I kept falling downwards and I'm still falling and the camera is following me. So we have some work to do before we enable camera limits, which will stop the camera from following you too far down or too far in one direction. Let's talk about that drag margin that actually enables us to customize how much of the middle of the screen our character can travel without the camera moving to follow our character. That's called the drag margin. All of these drag margins, left, top, right, and bottom, are set to 0 0.2. And these numbers are a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna zoom in to kind of best illustrate what's going on here. This 0 0.2 refers to 20%, but it doesn't refer to 20% of the entire width or height of the camera's view. It refers to 20% of the distance between the center of Steve or Steve's origin and one side of the viewport or the other, or from the middle of Steve up to the top of the viewport or to the bottom. So it only refers to one direction away from Steve to the outside edge of the screen. The 20% in all of those values, the 0 0.2, refers to 20% of that distance. So right now, Steve can really only move 20%, which is not a huge area. So if I change both the left and the right values here to 0 0.5 and 0. Oh, that one's the top. I'll change the right 0 0.5. 
Now Steve has more room to move in the middle of the screen, more range, essentially half of the screen, but in the middle. But you might find that this is actually too much because you can get now closer to the edges, which means you might not be able to see things coming as soon. Like if an enemy is coming up, well, you are gonna be closer to it before you see it with these new settings. So if I press the play scene button and I fall, I have to go quite a lot closer to the edge like where I am right now for the camera to follow me. I can go all the way over to right about here before the camera starts following me. So this actually might not be ideal. You can choose your own settings here. Same for the top and bottom. I think I'm gonna leave left and right at 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. I might play around with top and bottom as well, but I'm gonna leave them at their defaults for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this scene out. I'll press play scene and I can follow my character around with the camera. It looks good. I can jump up on platforms and hopefully not fall off. Oh, I fell off because that platform is too far away. I need to adjust my, uh, my tile map so that these things are closer together. But limits, there should be limits on your camera because as you can see, if you fall off the edge, of a platform and you fall into the abyss, you don't want the camera to follow you. Likewise, if you're like me, well, maybe you want the character to start at the far left of your game. And so I can actually select Steve and move Steve and notice how that camera border, the camera itself is actually following me. Well, when I start my game, it's not gonna load to the default view rectangle anymore. It's gonna load to the camera's view. So I can just move my character around and that will be where the game's camera starts. And the camera, of course, is always gonna be centered on Steve, but I might not want that. When I press the play scene button now, I can see that there is a cliff at the very beginning of this level. And ideally, I would have the camera actually not centered on Steve right now. I would have the camera more to the right and cutting off this part of the scene because I don't want the player to see this. In fact, I'm gonna make a really not visually appealing uh, wall here. So I'm gonna just use my green tile and paint wall right there. I don't need those ones because I don't want Steve to be able to fall off the abyss that he can't even see once we set limits on the camera. I'm going to select the camera and over in the limit section of the inspector, we have these limits and these are used to stop the camera from going past on either one of its sides. So it's left or right or top or bottom, the limit that we set. As you can see, the limits are really high, really low numbers, so our camera can go pretty much anywhere. But before we start editing these numbers, I'm gonna go down to the editor section of the camera's properties right here, and I'm gonna check draw limits. So now, if we could actually see these limits on screen, they're way too far away right now, we would actually see a yellow line on screen where these limits are so we can visually see where our camera will stop. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say my camera cannot go past a certain distance to the left of my screen. So I'm gonna change this left value to zero and I'm gonna press enter. So now what you can see in my 2D workspace is that my camera can now not even get over to Steve because we have this yellow line and that's our limit that we can see because I turned on draw limits down here under editor. So this is not ideal of course if I play my game. As you can see the camera moved down as Steve fell but Steve is off to the left. So I'm gonna set this left limit not to zero, but I think based on the fact that I know that this camera viewport is 1024 pixels wide, that it's gonna be a little bit more than that on this side. I'm gonna try negative 1024. And now you can see that the camera will get almost all the way back to that wall that we wanna get all the way to, but not quite show to the player, but not quite. So now if I press play scene, well, we can see Steve, the camera's not centered on Steve anymore, but ideally I shouldn't be able to go off screen at all. So that wall isn't quite, we're not quite reaching it. So I'm gonna try or negative 1000, 60 and I'll press enter and you can see our limit nudged over and this is just going to be a little bit of math for us if I know how many tiles I have in my grid I can count and multiply that by 64 in my case I'm not going to do that math at least not on screen right now 
So I'm going to select my camera and change this to negative 1100. And that's a little bit too much. But by the power of me pausing this video recording and doing that math, I counted in my tile map that there are 17 tiles from the zero point in my game. Remember that this up and down line here is the zero line on the X axis. So from the left of that in the negative territory, we have 17 boxes here. 17 times 64 is 1,088, I believe. And we're working in the negative space here. So I'm gonna type in, I'll select my camera 2D, negative 1,088 and I'll press enter. So now that perfectly lines up. If I press play C now, the camera is just skimming that wall. And if I press the left key on my keyboard to make my player walk to the left, we are not gonna fall off that edge because we're hitting that wall, but we can't see that wall. And that's exactly what I want. So now I'm gonna set up my camera to these limits for the bottom of my scene as well. I want my camera to be able to go down a little bit but not a whole lot. So I know that from here down to here is about 600. So I'm gonna say about 700 for the bottom limit of my camera. So with the camera selected, I'll go to the bottom limit and I'll say uh, 700. And you need to remember that if you are starting at zero, zero and you're moving downwards, you're actually counting up, which is a little bit weird, I know. So it's 700 and not negative 700 down here. Okay, so now if I press play scene and I start my game and I walk all the way to the edge and I accidentally fall off. Well, I'll get there in just a moment. The camera doesn't follow me, but yes, I'm going to still fall forever. Okay. So what I'll do now is I will set up my top and right limits. I'm going to zoom out so I can see my whole scene and I'll pan over. I want to get to somewhere over here or have a limit over here. So I think that is about 3000 or so. So I'll type 3000 for my right limit. And you'll just have to play around with these for yourself. I think that's okay for me. And for my top limit, remember that when you go up, it's negative. So I'm going to say top negative 500 and press enter. Last but not least, we're going to turn it on smoothing because wouldn't it be nice if your camera moved a little bit smoother than it already does. So there are two places where you can turn on smoothing for the limits of your game. You can turn on smoothing. You'll see what that does. And of course, with the camera 2D selected, there is a smoothing section. If I turn smoothing on, well, the camera will more smoothly follow the character than it already does, especially if you're moving fast and then you come to a stop like you're falling and you land on the ground. The camera will act a little bit nicer than following you pixel by pixel uh, when you're in the middle of the screen area, okay? And you can change the speed of the smoothing, so how fast it'll speed up to you. I'll just leave this at five. So let's go ahead and try our game out. I'll press play scene. I'm starting off to the left of my game's level. I can hit the left wall and I can't go any further. That's what I want. I can walk to the right and I'll speed this part up. And now I can jump on platforms and I don't think I'm gonna make this platform. But as you can see, I can just go back and edit my tile map. So maybe I think that this platform needs to be a little bit wider and I'll make a middle section right there and I'll press the play scene. And so now hopefully I can land on and reach all the platforms in my game. And as you can see, I'm being followed uh, by the camera quite nicely. And if I fall off the edge, well, I'll fall, but the camera won't follow me down into the abyss. Okay, so that will be it for this video. Uh, go ahead and add a camera to your game that follows your character with limits so the camera doesn't go too far. In the next video, we're going to add one-way platforms to our game. So that means that when you are a character and you bonk your head into the bottom of a platform, that'll be the kind of platforms that we have right now. But other kinds of platforms in platformer games allow you to jump up and nicely glide through a platform like you're traveling in front of it. But then when you fall back down, you can land on that platform. We're going to add one-way platforms in the next video. But that will be it for this video. Of course, if you like this video or if you don't in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Godot or Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon below to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next for my channel. 
But that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.